Hello YouTube, and today I'm going to review the Microtech Glycon. I have opened this before. I've got thoughts, quite a few thoughts actually about this knife. Um, let's do a size comparison with some familiar models. We've got a Benchmade 940 and a Spyderco Paramilitary 2. See, there is a big boy. Um, also, for the sake of it, let's compare this to an Ultratech. Standard Microtech model here. So the handle length is quite similar if you count the glass break, but the blade is quite long and quite a bit thicker. Um, so, I thought I was going to love the Glycon. I love that it's got titanium. I love it's got the titanium spacer here with the jimping. This clip is low profile uh, with this jimping here to make it so you can pull it out of your pocket easily, which I really like. Also, the fidget factor of having the triway slide. However, I quickly noticed one humongous issue, at least for me, who am sensitive to noise, and it's this. I don't think a $500 knife should be making that sound. When it's fired, the rattle goes away. But when it retracts, there's just enough tolerance for it to move smoothly. You know, the action is excellent on the Glycon. No doubt about that. However, it's just a hair too loose. Uh, and you know, if you're just moving it about, there's not a lot to hear. But if you're, you know, futzing with it, you're gonna run into some issues. So that's an issue, um, and probably my primary issue with this knife is the looseness of the slide. And that's something you could fix if you take uh, these off here and these here. Um, then you can pull off the slide uh, when it's centered. Let me just take it off track here. I'll actually go ahead and do that for the sake of the video. Got my trusty Benchmade blue box. I've customized with the bits that I use the most. And you'll want to do this with the blade in the free flow position. All right, I've broken those in. Just use this to finish it off. Something interesting here is there's actually two different screw sizes. These longer ones uh, hold the chassis together, where the shorter ones simply attach the inlays. So with these actually, you need to slide them forward if you want to remove them. And if you don't have this loose, then your slide will get in the way. So you'll, you can slide them forward and then take those off. Because that's the idea. Here we go. And a close look at these. Part of me would love to anodize these. But I actually think I'm going to sell this knife because I'm not loving it. And for that price point, gotta love it. All right, so in order to remove the slide, now you actually have to center it, and then you can slide it off. You can see this little opening in, in the groove in this slides over this sticky out piece of the aluminum chassis. And inside here, this smaller indent goes over this little nub. And so when it's centered, you can slide this on, um, and then it won't come off unless it's centered. Um, however, what I was suggesting is a way to fix that play is if you were to stick maybe like a piece of paper or something inside here to increase the tension a little bit, it might make the action a little bit tighter. Um, however, I believe it would remove the wiggle. And 
you want the long screws to be on the short side of the chassis as they're going to go through the scale or the inlay through the thinner side of the chassis and screw into the thick side to keep the whole thing together. All right. A feature that I'm actually quite fond of that the Ultratech has that I was initially unsure about uh, is the little spring underneath the slide, and I'll show you here. With the Ultratech, this is my signature series Spartan Shadow, um, there's actually a tiny spring underneath the slide. You can hear that. However, what that does is it pushes away, pushes the slide away from the chassis, um, which one reduces friction slightly, um, and it also makes it so it doesn't rattle at all because there's a constant bit of tension keeping it uh, pushed up against the chassis so that it doesn't, it's not just free floating um, like this is a little bit, which is what's causing that sound. For some reason, it's tight enough up here to really reduce the sound, um, but down here, with the Ultratech, that's not an issue, which I really like. Um, another thing that turned me off, I don't actually love how thick this is. It provides a really comfortable handhold. However, it just feels large and heavy, um, and I decided that I actually prefer the lightweight nature of the Ultratech to it. Here's another comparison, another nitpick I have with the Glycon uh, is the, <clears throat> excuse me, the thicker slide here is really nice. It's very comfortable. However, you must be straight on. And even when you're straight on retracting, it still digs into your thumb a little bit uncomfortably. You can see the lines it's making. Uh, and, and it can be a little bit painful. Another thing is you have to be straight on. If you try and fire the knife coming in at an angle, these edges here are really just gonna saw into your finger, especially if you slip and it is uncomfortable. Something I love about a similar model, the Direct Delta, that is cheaper and frankly has a very comparable size. The blade you can see here is just a hair thinner, um, but it is almost exactly the same length, so I didn't have that in frame. Um, however, the handle, there is a handle difference here, so the blade to handle ratio on the Glycon is superior which is a nice feature that the Glycon has going for it. Um, but one thing I like here about the uh, Direct Delta compared to the Glycon is the slide. It's almost as thick, um, but you see on the edges here where it's just this kind of sharp angle, it's rounded on the Direct Delta. This makes it so that retracting and deploying the knife is extremely painless, like there's no issue. I can do this all day without issue. Um, whereas with this one, I know it's gonna start to hurt my hand. Um, the action is also tougher. It's super smooth and super satisfying, but it requires more effort than this, which has the same size blade, um, and it's just less painful. Um, my last nitpick about the Glycon is the tri-slide the little slides. These are fun, and it's fun to be able to deploy it from the sides and to retract it, kind of like you're pulling down an axis lock or a bar lock. However, this is just not a comfortable shape. For something large like this that you're pushing with the meat of your thumb, it totally works. But this tiny little thing that you're needing to pull on to pull back the powerful spring in this, even when you're using both hands, is painful, and it leaves little marks that start to hurt. Um, and so the fidget factor goes down for me because it, it, it's just painful to use these. No matter how I slice it, even with these thick calluses that you can see that I have, uh, it still hurts. I can do it a few times before the pain gets uncomfortable. And who buys an OTF who doesn't want to fidget it? Oh, that sound. Um, so as cool as this is, their dedication to the X button, which is quite functional in most cases, um, in this model, I find that it just doesn't work here. Here it works. I wish they had rounded it like they did with the Direct Delta, but right here, something round uh, would have just been so much better and so much more comfortable because yeah, that just hurts. Even just deploying it just hurts, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, however, the jumping is really nicely placed and the jumping here along the spine with the titanium backspacer is awesome. I love that they use titanium. I mentioned wanting to anodize it. 
how cool would that be to have an anodized pocket clip, these inlays, and the spacer? Mega. Now uh, this is the production model, by the way. Um, the jumping up on the blade is extremely nice. Um, something that is, not a lot of people are gonna notice this, but I do like about the Glycon. Um, every knife, or every OTF has some blade play, unless you're Gavin Hawk. Um, and you've got one of his knives. Um, usually I've noticed though that that play only moves in one direction. For example, with the, I don't know if you can hear that. Uh, it moves this way here toward me, but it's not moving away from me, which is a little bit annoying when you go to cut and you feel the play because you're primary cutting side is going to be this side, especially if the single edge, this is a DE, uh, the double edge, uh, the Spartan blade. So if I'm cutting on my primary edge, which is here, you can hear the clicking. However, with this, and I don't know if they did this on purpose or if it's just maybe even my particular model, that's not the case. The play is in this direction. So I do feel it when I go to put my thumb on the jimping. However, I do not feel it when I go to cut with this knife, uh, which I think is preferable. So points to the Glycon for that. Uh, you can also use this as a lanyard hole here. Um, I wish they would use a little bit more of a standard bit. Uh, nobody's got a tor a T, whatever, this fat Torx bit uh, to remove the clip. Uh, I actually managed to use a flathead screwdriver, uh, which was quite effective. Uh, but maybe I just got lucky that I had the right size. So do I recommend the Glycon? Uh, yes, if that won't bother you. Maybe it's just mine that does this. Um, yes, if you're not too worried about these hurting your thumb. Um, because truly this is an amazing knife. Highly recommend it. Um, I don't love it, and so I can't justify keeping it, so I'm probably gonna end up selling this model, or this knife. Um, uh, I'm not going to do a cut test with this either because I intend to sell it. Uh, that's the Microtech Glycon. This is a production version with the bead blasted titanium. Uh, and yeah, uh, I give this probably an 8.5 out of 10, um, but I need it to be probably a 9.5 to 10 out of 10 for me to keep it. All right, thanks for watching, uh, and stay tuned to Oh, the Things You Can Cut uh, for more knife reviews.